Give us a big hand. Whoa. Now, I got a real great surprise for you all. My personality. No, I'm serious. I got, we got some really great things I want to share with you. But first, before we begin, I want you to take out a piece of paper and write down everything you got to do. I want your mind clear. What I'm going to, what I want to teach you, I want to have nothing else. Remember that when you try and remember things every 20 seconds, it pops in your mind. And I watch that as I'm teaching. People go, all of a sudden they go, they look away, and then they come back to their teaching. I'm like, no, no, no. Have it all on paper so you don't have to worry about it. So please clear your mind. This is going to be a very, very, very important teaching. All right. Everybody got everything down there? How many got two or three things? How many got five or six more? No? What are we got? Just everything, so nothing else is in your mind. All right. Very important to clear your mind so what I teach you is going to be real clear and distinct. All right? Let me know when you're ready. All set? Oh, someone's still writing a, writing a whole book right there. <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly Father, I thank you for the greatness of your word, for the greatness of these people here, these that make up your temple, your church, those who you dwell in. I thank you for this teaching to really bless them, to strengthen them, and impart wisdom to them, that they may truly walk even closer with you, Father, deeper into your shadow, and to be able to fully grasp your wisdom, your majesty, and greatness, that they lives and all of who know them can recognize you dwelling within them. And for all we accomplish to do, Father, it's to your praise and glory as we walk in the footsteps of your firstborn from the dead, our risen and returning Lord Jesus, your anointed. Okay. So now, what is so cool about this is the fact that, well, I, I shouldn't give it away. But anyway, let's start rolling here, OK? Keep it really simple. There we go. Here it comes. It's on. And we have it. There we go. OK. Uh, again, this is the walk and walking in the true way of life, the way God designed it, with his wisdom and his knowledge. And the most, one of the coolest things is light, All right? Now, I know we're called the children of light. I know we're supposed to walk in light. But we, we, do we understand what light is? We go, yeah, Frank, I get up in the morning, just light outside and take a walk. Well, we need to understand what this is all about. And if I ask you, what is light? What's it for? What is it for? Why is it important? See, and we don't really think about these things. We have these ideas, like we know what light is for, but what happens when you don't have light? What becomes difficult to do? Now I'm going to try and illustrate this. That will give us an insight. But first, we're going to cover light. We're going to shrink it down, put it over in the corners. So we don't forget what the subject matter is over here. And it's going to be there to remind us that subject matter is what is light. <laughs> Quit looking so cute. OK. All right, here we go. Not bad, huh? All right, Mark 4.10. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked him the parable. What parable is this? This is silver in the what? And the seed, right? Silver in the seed. How many remember the silver in the seed? How many were there when Jesus taught it? No, I'm just joking. Okay. <laughs> Guys, all right. So what happens with silver in the seed is that you assume you know what the birds are. You assume you know what the seed is. You assume you know what the earth is. And you find out, you're wrong, because the Bible says this is what it means. Remember that? Do you all remember that? Yes or no? I mean, if you don't, please let me know. I can review it really quickly. Is it really clear? Remember the sower, so with the what? Right. So he gives us, the sower went out to sow. He doesn't say anything more than that. And then some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Remember that? Okay. So, but he doesn't define what these are. Later on, after everybody's left going, wow, what a cool teaching, you know, the disciples walk up and say, I have no idea what you're talking about. And he says, okay, I'll share it with you. And he does. And that's, that's when he says, when he was alone, they were about him with the twelve, asked him the parable. And he said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. Without what? 
All these things are done in parables. That seeing, they may see and not perceive. Whoa. Seeing and not perceiving. And hearing, they may hear and not what? Where are they without? Where are they without? If they can see but not perceive, and they can hear and not understand. At least at any time they should be converted, and their separation from God should be forgiven them. Now, but unto them that are without, they're all done in parables, because almost everybody is outside that realm. So this is what I'm going to explain to you, what is light and why is it important. So we're going to start off with Genesis. Ready? Here we go. Verse 1, I mean, chapter 1, verse verse 3. And God said, let there be what? Light. And there was. And the word was is not, not, it became light. And God saw the light that it, and there's the word, that's in italics, that it, or that, and then good. Doesn't have it was. Good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Everybody got that? What day is this? First day. What are we talking about? Light. I mean, I, that's what it says right there. Light. Right. Everybody see that? Light. It's, it's talking about light. All right. What happened? God said it. It came into existence. God examined it and said, good. Does that make sense? What day is this? First day. So how many know what this is? How many have seen what he called into existence? All right, let's continue on. Let's go into Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament. Firmament means the expanse. To give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day. He called that the sun. And the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was what? Now, here's the humdinger. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Does anyone see a problem here? When you and I think of light, if we walk outside, has there light outside? Where's it coming from? The sun. If we go out at night, is there light? Yes. Where's it coming from? The moon or the stars. But he didn't make them until the fourth day. So what was in chapter 1, verse 1 through 3? God said, let there be light. Does anyone see a problem with this? Because this is the fourth day. So all the sources of what we think is light didn't come into existence until the fourth day. Do you see a discrepancy here? Remember I told you all these things are done in parables that seeing they may see and not perceive and hearing they may hear and not what? How many people have been reading Genesis and not understanding what it's saying? Because this is all what's called compound parables or compound figures of speech. They're all true, but if you take it on the surface, you're going to miss the greatness of it. And I'm going to take you down deep into its depths. You ready? Got your snorkel gear on? Scuba tanks? Okay. Fourth day, three days later, from when God first called out light. But these are the sources of light, yes or no? But before that, in verse 1, what was the source of light? 
God. Right? God's light is not the same as physical light. Or can't you tell? God's light was way before the physical light. All right. Why is light important? All right. I need someone to judge what's in this picture. Tell me what is in that picture. I'm sorry? Well, that's true. That's absence of light. But, you know, there is something there, by the way. And you're all, you've all seen it. You look really, it's really familiar to almost everybody. Pardon? Well, I know that. I mean, there's something there. Can you see it? Why? What is this picture missing? Light. So if you tell me, do you like what you see in here? This, it's an object. Do you like it? You can't make that judgment. You have no idea what's behind what you're seeing, looking at, besides a black screen. You ever walk out in the middle of the night, like, I can't see anything, right? And you can't make a judgment. So we're looking at this. So does someone like that image? There's no image there. Why can't you see it? Because the image has no light upon it. Light gives you the ability to discern, to make a judgment. Got it? All right, now do you see what it is? I had a little bit, I brought up the light a little bit. What do you see? Is that enough light to see what it is? I need more what? More light, right? So if I increase the light, now we'll see it even better. Isn't that cute? Just like me, huh? All right, okay. So understand what you need to make something clear in your mind is more light. Because this is here, but before, there was nothing in your mind. I said, look at that, what do you think of it? There was nothing came into your mind. But with light and more light, now the image is sharp and clear in your mind. Light gives you the ability to perceive, to understand, and to make a what? Judgment. So can you make the judgment? Do you like it or not? Okay, not cool. All right. Do you like that? No? I'm like, okay. All right, so now... Let's go back and examine this. Genesis and God what? Said. Now understand, God said is light. If God said it, that is what? Light. And God said, verse 6, verse six and verse 9, and God said, and verse 11, and God said, this is God's speaking. His bringing forth light. Why? Because these words carry images to our mind and help us to perceive and to understand. Does that make sense? Okay. And we have verse 14, and God what? Said, all these are God's images and sounds that our ear picks up and we get an image in our head. And God said, and God said, verse 24, and God said, verse 26, verse 28, and God said. Now, what happens right after God said these things? God examined them, and that's the word, so as to examine them, and there's a judgment. They're good. So God only judges things by his what? Word. And he judges his own word by the word. So everything is judged by God's word. In the beginning was the what? The Gospel of John, verse 1, chapter 1. In the beginning was the word. word. Okay. And that's exactly what we see. The word of God was given before anything else came into being. So the existence of God's word is the standard. I can't measure anything or make a determination without a ruler. So I bring a, a ruler into existence, now I can measure its, itself and other rulers with the ruler. I got it? So there's a standard. This important? Oh, yeah. 
big time important. Ready? The Samoa. You want Samoa? Samoa? Yeah. All right. Okay. God saw, and then the judgment. Good. Understand what a judgment is. Can you make a judgment without light? No. You need to have the image of what it is you're judging clear. That in the class, like in the, other, the basic class, foundational class, I said, because of the excruciating, unbearable pain, the doctor removed his leg. What did, what did that mean? Do you remember? So when you hear that, what do you think happened? Now, I've given her the words. She's got the images. So what did you see? What happened? <laughs> Removed the guy's leg? Or did he have a prosthesis and removed his leg? Remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, well, you needed more light. The image you have was incorrect. Does that make sense? Okay. Deja vu, right? <laughs> okay. You ever heard deja, no, deja vu? No, it's the same shit. All right. The purpose of the word, the purpose of God's light is for what? Judgment. The more of God's word you have, the greater you can have a judgment that corresponds to God. And guess what we're supposed to be? God's what? Judges. And without an understanding, we don't judge so good. 1 Corinthians 4, 5. Therefore, judge nothing before the time. Remember, judge not least she be judged. That judge, therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light. What are we talking about? Judgment. When? Not now. None of us are to judge anybody. God, that's why it says there, judge, but God will bring to light. When Christ returns, he'll bring to light the hidden things of darkness. Got it? So light gives you a greater image to be able to visualize. When it comes to God's word, more of God's thoughts and images help you see clearly and not what everybody else sees. Is it making sense? Is everybody with me? Oh, good. All right. And the crowd goes wild. Here we go. Now, Matthew 23, 1 and 3. Then spoke Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, both, saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. That means a position of authority and power. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and what? Do. But do ye not after their works, for they say and do not. Will they know the word? Sure. But is the word what they live by? No. It's their words. They know it. They speak it. But it's not something they live by. So the word's something separate. Well, if they're not using the word to make their judgments, how are they judging? Matthew 15, 12 to 14. Then came his disciples and said to him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were pissed off, I mean offended, after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be what? Blind. blind. What does blind mean? They, they have eyes, but they cannot what? See. There is light, but they cannot perceive it. They're what? Blind. Everybody got this? Okay, cool. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. The scribes and Pharisees do not know light. They don't know it. They are blind to God's light. You understand? Now, what gets me is I have a lot of people talking about, oh, man, look at that guy. He's a really intense Christian. He's a good Christian. Like, well, no, he's not. 
his understanding of God's word is like zip to nothing. And he's a good moral person. I have no question about that. Nice guy. Great. But I wouldn't call him a Christian. The question is, how is everybody measuring everybody? By what judgment are they judging? By what light? Beware that the light that is in thee be not what? Darkness. Because if the light in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? See the problem. So the Pharisees think they have light, but they what? Do not. They're making judgment calls by the wrong source. So I want to, what's that source? How is it possible if they know God's word, how could they be out in left field? Everybody has that choice. They can quote the scriptures, they can know the scriptures, but doing it, oh, totally different thing. So I'm going to help you see them, see the difference real quick. 1 Corinthians 10.32 Give none offense neither to the Jews, nor the Gentiles, nor the church of God. God puts, we as human beings put people into categories. That's a Caucasian. That's a black. That's a red. Or we go, that's, that's an Asian. That's a North American. That's a European. Or, I mean, that's a redhead. That's a blonde. That's a brunette. I mean, we, we do that. We put people in categories. How does God put people in categories? How does God put God? How does God put what categories does God put people in? Jews, Gentiles, and the Church of God. Sure. All together now. Go, go. Jews, Gentiles, and the Church of God. So which one are you? There doesn't say last one. I'm in the category of the last one. <laughs> There's only three categories. There's not a fourth called the last one. All right. So there's Jew, Gentile, and Church of God. So let's graph it. Bang. All right. These are the three categories God places all mankind into. They are categor categorically placed according to the word. God's light. That God categorizes her by the amount of what? Light. They know and live by. So here I made it simple. There's the Gentiles. Notice there is dark and there's lighter dark. The Jews. There is dark light and then lighter dark. <laughs> they kind of like bound in the middle here. And then the Church of God, which has a dark side and a light side. Got it? And that's the spectrum that the Bible talks about. Now, when you move past the Gentiles, then you've got the dark also is the problem. Because Gentiles, it says that there's no preeminence above a man has no preeminence of a beast for all his vanity. So Gentiles and animals are the same. So when science says animals and man, there's no difference. They're right. Unless they got what? Light, spirit. There really is no difference. You ever try and teach the word of God to a dog? No, it ain't going to go anywhere. Nope. Well, have you tried, Frank? Yeah, I tried. You just go, <laughs> that's about it. Just like the attention. So this is darkness. It gets darkier here, but that's darkness, and that moves all the way to light. Got it? So this is the spectrum God addresses. Because God puts the categories by what? Light. Not knowing something, but understanding it. How it fits with all the scripture on the same subject. The purpose of light is what? All right, one more time. The purpose of light is what? Judgment. Judgment. And that's what the example we see in Genesis. How do Gentiles make judgment? We've all been Gentiles. We should know. Give me a woof. Right? Woof. All right. We've all been Gentiles. So how did we make judgment before? Because we don't, we're not supposed to be doing that anymore, by the way. We're supposed to have stopped doing that, making judgments that way. But let's see how we do it. This is how we categorize everything. You ready? There's good, smart, stupid, and evil. Seriously. Everybody we know is in one of those four categories. Anybody know anyone that's really good? Know anyone that's really smart? Know anyone that's really stupid? 
-hmm. nor anyone that's evil. Mm -hmm. There you go. You just covered all of man's categories. Now, Jesus had been, in many accounts, at the, the whole time, he was good, smart, stupid, and evil, all in the same time, depending on who you talk to. Pharisees said he was a Beelzebub, the devil. All depends on who you talk to. So, but all of us as Gentiles put everybody in these four categories. And we even put ourselves in these categories. Damn it, I wish I was so freaking stupid. Have I mean, you ever done that? Right? What the heck is wrong with me? Hey, that was pretty good. <laughs> Right? Good, smart, stupid, and evil. Elon Musk is which one of those four? Smart. What was he called two and a half years ago? Stupid. And he was called evil. We, we move people in and out of the category as we go. Isn't that weird? But we do this. And person, we move people from good to smart, from smart to stupid. Like the guy that was the uh, crypto king, whatever it was, and he, FTX, I forget what his name is, Sam Bankman Freed. He was so smart and he was so good that he wound up so stupid and then became so evil, right? Because he, you understand? Well, how do you define these things? Well, it's really easy. If you're talking about the Roman Empire, where this idea came from, which is how we live, the Roman Empire had soldiers. The Roman soldiers would march, and they, they'd given up everything to defend the nation, and they died. They give up everything and their life for everybody else. So the example of it is the Roman soldier. He gives his life totally for others, and he dies, and everybody benefits for his death. That's, that's good. It comes from Rome. Aren't you glad you're not Romans? Now, what's smart? Smart benefits himself and others. So if he benefits himself and others, he's smart. He's smart, smart. Stupid. He and others lose everything. He loses everything and all those that back him lose everything. That's called stupid. That's exactly what they called Jesus. After, he was, after they crucified him, they thought he was stupid. See? It didn't amount to anything. The disciples all fled. Everybody was all lost everything. See? He was stupid. And we judge people that way. That person's so stupid. Ding. That person's really smart. Ding. Man, that's such a good person. Ding. This is how Gentiles do it. How do you, and aren't you glad you don't do that anymore, or are you still doing it? Are you judging yourself this way? What's evil? Well, evil is the individual benefits and everybody else loses everything, and he's the only one that benefits. That's called evil. It doesn't matter if it's Enron, or Sam Bankman Freed, or anyone else. That's how we say, okay, you're evil. You, you gained and everybody else lost. Therefore, that's evil. All right, so what about a lottery? One person wins and everybody else loses. <laughs> a little bit hip hypocritical, isn't it? How does God make judgment? Da, 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 da. All right, let me show you. Bing, 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 bing. What is it? It's growth. From knowing nothing about God to knowing God and walking in his truth. That's what the spectrum is for. That's our lifetime. I was dumber in a bucket of rocks, maybe a little dumber. Then I got a little smarter. I began to understand God. And then I, I acted really stupid and foolish. Not that I don't do that anymore. And then I went, oh, and I blew it, made mistakes. Then finally I can walk. Of course, occasionally I still trip, but that's okay. Got it? Not real complicated. 
So this is God makes a judgment this way as far as an individual's growth and development. He never judges you, ever. But we sure as heck judge one another, do we not? And if we judge one another, then our judgment is in error. By the moment you say someone is good, you made a judgment. You said they're smart, that's a judgment. You said they're stupid, that's a judgment. Especially if you do it to another believer, another saint. Really bad. That's not your call. How many are oldest? How many have more than one brother and sister? Do you ever call your sister or your brother stupid? Never? Why are we did? <laughs> My brother called me stupid, right? So we, we call each other these things and we make a judgment call on that. Then mother comes in and beats the tar of both of you. Right? Don't you ever call your brother that, right? Or your sister. Even if she deserves it, don't call her that. This is darkness. This is what happened to the Pharisees. They left the word and went by the Greek and Roman way of judgment. That's where the problem comes in. That's why Jesus said they are blind. They are making judgment in darkness. So we got that? This, that way, is death. Because once you label a person, how do you unlabel them? What if you didn't know the whole context of it and you made a judgment call and it was wrong? Now, how do you back it out? Especially if you know it's growth. Well, I'm sorry, Frank, they were just stupid. All right, look, if there's a little baby there, it's only three months old, and you say, this is a man. You go, that's some man, he can't even stand up. Here, try and catch a ball. Wah! See, he bounces her off his head. Wait, 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 give him some time. He's growing. We don't appreciate there's a growth factor here. And that's what God looks at. He doesn't look at our momentarily lapse of intelligence or lapse of perception or just being downright stupid, right? Whoops, I'm sorry, I didn't say that, right? <laughs> but our moments, you know, where our brains don't, the two cells don't talk to each other and we have this you know, air gap or whatever. This is making sense. This is the problem. And everybody who says they're Christian is going by this and they are in darkness. They have to go by this. Okay, let me show you how the Apostle Paul worked it out. Walking by Revelation, 1 Corinthians, chapter 3. Now, how many have ever read Corinthians? How many would like to have been in that church? I mean, how, if you read Corinthians, you'd be shocked. Because not only did they, I mean, they pretty crazy stuff from chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7. It's like, I don't know how Paul, so Paul handled it, you know, without a big sledgehammer or something. But nonetheless, the situation is, what is he going to say? You were stupid. You're evil. No, he never said that. Now, you read 1 Corinthians, and your jaw is going to hit the floor. And, and the churches today, they think that that's real evil, and in Galatians, it's really soft. No, it's the reverse. This is soft. And Galatians is evil because we get backwards. Why? Because what he, he explains why the Corinthian church was acting so ridiculously ignorant and naive. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but unto carnal, even as unto what? Babies. Spiritually, they were babies. They got the word, but they didn't understand it. It wasn't clear to them. And they made constant stupid, well, judgment call, Frank. They made an incorrect judgment. They were the whole, whole group of them. It was only about 800, maybe 1,000. They were all babies. Isn't that weird? They're all babies. All right, how about another one? Romans 8, 16. 
the Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the adults of God. It doesn't say that. It says what? Children. Hot dog. Children. We're the children of God. That's kind of like, what? Yep, we're children. But I don't like to think of myself as a child. Well, I'm sorry, you are. If you're still going by the good, bad, smart, and evil, then, you know, whatever, you're still a child. You're back to a babe. Ephesians 4.15, but speaking the truth in agape, may grow up, may grow up. What does grow up mean? Yeah, may, it's up to the individual. May grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, the anointed. So that what are you talking about? That's a teenager to a young adult, spiritually speaking. Got it? God's looking at what? Growth and what? Development. How many, how many parents are back there and say, why can't you be smart like your brother? That's a really bad thing to say. Very bad thing. Calling your child stupid. They, weren't, they lacked either knowledge, understanding, or wisdom. They need doctrine. They need instruction. And then reproof until they get it. Can't make a judgment call them because the kid that actually believes you believe that and that thing is going to live in that label the whole time. First John 2, 9 and 10. He that saith he is in light and hates his brother. The word hate doesn't mean hate. It just means to have no respect, no regard for what they say or do. Nothing whatsoever. He is in what? Darkness. Whoa, light and darkness. So a person can be, know the light, but still be in what? Darkness. Hateth just means having a low regard. In other words, you label them as being stupid or being anything. You label them. Now they can't go anywhere. And they can't improve themselves. He that agapeth brother, seeing him from God's perspective, abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. How many don't want to slip and fall? How many don't want to stumble? I'm telling you how. I don't see you guys as, in fact, I don't even see you as babies. I think you as like, the, you know, young adolescents, young adults. That's my vision of you. And Jesus had the same thing as his disciples. They hardly any of them earned it, but he still saw the disciples as doing the works that he did and what? Greater. And that still holds today. But you got to see from whose perspective. And don't label your anyone, including yourself, as being stupid or smart or evil, got it, or good. No such animal. And Jesus refused to be called good. Did he not? Why callest thou me good? You can't judge me. Only one who can judge is who? God. Does that make sense? He refused to allow to be placed under that judgment that has no bearing on the truth. And you should too. Now, Matthew 12. Are you all blessed by this? It's like, a, oh, wow, right? It's not quite like everybody has thought. And some people even forgot what happens when the doctor... <laughs> Can't believe you forgot you have been here with a laser? Ping. All right, Matthew 12, 48 through 50. Ready? But he answered and said unto him that told him, Your mother and father, you know, your father and your mother and your brothers and sisters seek for thee. And he answered and said unto him, Who is my mother? Well, pff, talk about a you know brain fart. You know, like, how could you forget who your mother is? Talk about temporary amnesia. How many here would wake up in the morning and go, who is my mother? Right. Anyone do that? You do? No, oh, okay. <laughs> who are my brethren? If I did that, my brothers and sisters would kill me. How could I not know who I am? Right? 
We all do that. But here, Jesus says, it's not that he didn't know who they were. He didn't have a senior moment, and he's only 30. What was this all about? Because their hearts didn't line up with God's light. They did not have that light in their judgment. And he stretched forth his hand toward the disciples and said, Behold my mother and my what? Brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother, my sister, and my mother. How is someone Jesus' mother? How does that work? You get to be Mother Mary. No, that's not what we're talking about. That's, this is the culture. The reason being is because people, women used to marry, they would be like 15 or 16, and marrying someone who was 40, 45 years of age. There was a big gap. So when she got to be 40, he was already 80 and usually passed away, which is what happened to Joseph. He passed away. So who winds up in charge of the family is the oldest boy. So then what happens, him being in 30 and becoming the first of the family to be 30 and the one in charge, now he takes care and she's under his what? Authority. Just like his younger brothers and sisters. Does that make sense now? Some people say, well, well, Mother Mary, like, come on. Mother Mary is under Jesus and above him, right? They don't know the culture. They don't know the customs. They don't know the scriptures. So understand, how many here in Jesus' eyes are his brother and his sister? You are. You put forth the heart, the effort, the time, the finance. You, this is your ministry. This is what Jesus talks about. You're his family. And you're stuck with me for how long? Any complaints, talk to the management. Okay. I'm not talking about Patricia. I'm talking about God. <laughs> All right, 1 Corinthians 4, 5. Remember I taught. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light hidden things of darkness. When you walk by those categories, too much is hidden. Because you don't get the full picture in order to make that judgment. That person is stupid. Do you know the full st scope of it? I think that person is dumb. Do you know the full scope of it? Until you grasp everything about it, you can't make a judgment call. You can ask God how you can help, how you can assist, how you can direct, but that's what it's all about. And will make manifest the counsel of his hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. So what about people that are without God and have no standard? Now what? And are judging by the world? Now what? What does it say? Stay away from them. Why? Because what they say is, when you walk by those categories, then that which is evil is called good, and that which is good is called evil. There's no way around it. And I don't want to call good evil. Does that make sense? Nor do I want to call evil good. But you can't do that if you're, if you're definitely going to do that if you walk by the four categories. The four categories are going to direct you to cause yourself and others more harm than you can ever imagine. Does that make sense? Well, understanding that people are growing and developing and you're here, to, you're here to help each other grow and develop. That's a lot easier. A lot more fun. Less heartache. Does that make sense? I had someone here the other day. He goes, somebody, Frank, everybody hates me. Okay. He goes, I mean, everybody hates me. My fiance left me. My, uh, my dog died. And he's on and on and on, right? I'm sitting there listening. Okay, okay, okay. He goes, and my life is terrible. He goes, all right. He says, and my boat, you know, broke down, and now it's leaking, and uh, I've lost everything. I go, sounds, you know, I can see that's really serious. <laughs> I can see this is intense for you. 
But is it going to stay that way? No. I said, do you think it's going to stay this way? And it can if you want it to, but it's not up to anyone but who. And he saw that. And I shared more word with him, and he walked out of there going, yeah. And off he went. He was really glad. Mm -hmm. But you see, we're not here. You know, I didn't tell him that. I go, that was really stupid to do that, and it's stupid to do that. He already knows what he did not right. And he's like beating his head against the wall. What do I need to beat him up for? Does that make sense? So we don't have to find fault. We just find out what we can do to lift them up. Does that make sense? So next time I call you up and say, man, I need someone to talk to. I'm really having a bum day. Now you can lift me up. Right? Plug in something in the hole there and get me up. <laughs> or you got a big gap here. Let's dip that in the word in there. That's what we do for each other, right? Help each other grow. All right. So now you understand what light is. What's the purpose of light? I'm sorry? To judge, to make a judgment. If you're not judging by God's word, what are you making a judgment by? Good, smart, stupid, and evil. I'm seriously. When you read the newspapers, what's it talking about? Good, smart, stupid, and evil. That's all it's there. Every book you read, what's it about? Good, smart, stupid, and evil. That's it. That's all we care about. Oh, Frank, what do you think of Mother Teresa? She's a good woman. Yeah, she gave up everything and gained nothing, but she gave her whole life for everything else. Huh? That Marine Corps, you know, whatever. Good old Greek and Roman ways, you understand? Look at each other and yourself as growing. Have fun. Smile when you do dumb stuff, right? Because when you do dumb stuff, you're like, well, that was pretty unadult. <laughs> I need to grow a little bit and learn, right? How many have ever had your child had a mini person and they went and cut their own hair? And you went and you tried not to laugh. You try to keep it. You look really dumb. But you try to find out how you can, you don't condemn, you don't criticize. You're just like, mm. next time, talk to me, I'll cut your head. <laughs> and especially when you show them in the mirror what they look like, they just, oh. Yeah, no, not, yeah, no. <laughs> All right. So that is what light is. It's enough information, specifically from God, to make the right judgment. Is that cool? All right, so are you all blessed by this? Yes. You see how that fit? Well, Father, thank you for the greatness of your word in helping us to grow, to learn, and understand that our lives may truly be blessed and others can recognize your presence within us, that the greatness and joy of life can be manifested in us and overflow into others, that they can see and recognize your presence in us and truly have life the way you designed it, that we may truly be in your shadow and walk in the footsteps of your firstborn from the dead are risen, and return, Lord Jesus, your anointed. All right, ready? You are what? Best. Best.